Hello everyone. So today I want to talk about Wall Street analysts, specifically looking at Tesla stock. So first one I want to mention is Dan Ives from Webb Bush. He has a price target for Tesla of $225, which he just updated yesterday. Stephen Mark Ryan here. I follow Stephen Mark Ryan and his Solving the Money Problem channel daily. Uh, he's a great source for information, in my opinion, on Tesla. And he called this uh, for Dan Ives, he, he seems to just chase the price and keep updating his price target. Uh, so he highlighted that here in his latest video. You can see in October 20th of 2022, he had a $300 price target. In November 10th, 2022, he had a 250 price target. December 21st, at a $175 price target. And then yesterday, updating it again, as I said, to 225 Price targets are not for where you think the price of the stock will be. It is for what one thinks is the fair value of the stock based on the financial metrics of a given company and expectations for the future. Dan may just keep moving his price target to keep himself in the limelight. And in this regard, it seems to be a good strategy. The next analyst I wanna talk about is Gordon Johnson. He has a price target on Tesla of $73. And if you want to have a laugh, look at his ranking on tip ranks. It seems like Gordon Johnson might be paid to be bearish on Tesla, or maybe he has investments in competitors, or is just acting to stay in the limelight, playing for all the Tesla haters out there. In the past, Gordon has constantly been stating that Tesla is a busted girl story as Tesla continued to grow and grow. And he often seems to make the mistake of comparing Tesla to the other car companies and suggesting that it's just that Tesla is just a car company. Next, we have Craig Irwin, who has a price target of $85 on Tesla and currently has a hold rating. I've watched this guy a few times and despite his very low price target for Tesla, he doesn't seem to have the confidence to suggest to sell it. So he just has a hold rating on it. He's a long-term Tesla bear. He also seems to only see Tesla as a car company. In this article here from December 30th, 2022, he says, uh, so I have a $85 price target and a neutral rating. I've had one of the most bearish price targets on the stock now for about two years. My thesis has been underpinned by the fact that Toyota makes about an order of magnitude more vehicles than Tesla. There's nothing that Tesla has that Toyota doesn't, but Tesla has been egregiously overvalued. So we have seen the repricing of Tesla throughout the year as competition has incredibly come to the market as people have understood the outlook for pricing pressure. It's making the comparison to a traditional car company saying that Tesla has nothing that Toyota doesn't. Well, what about over the air updates, for example, FSD software, where is Toyota on that? Is Toyota producing millions of electric vehicles and energy side of the business. But in Craig Irwin's eyes, it's it's just a car company. It should be valued just like Toyota in his eyes. Next, we have Alex Potter from Piper Sandler. He has a price target on Tesla of $300. And in this article from January 19th of 2023, we have some comments from him. We don't think most investors appreciate the extent to which lower pricing could support Tesla's market share. This is particularly true in the United States where lower prices combined with the $7,500 tax credit could unlock at least 300,000 units of incremental demand, if not twice that. Additionally, he added the price cuts could help Tesla poach demand from competitors like GM, Ford, and Ram, all of which have chipped away at Tesla's EV market share in recent years. The US auto market has real ample real estate for Tesla to expo exploit. An important note on market share, this is a percentage. And yes, Tesla's market share as a percent of the market will go down. So if you think of a company that has 100% market share and then one competitor enters the space, well, immediately, if that competitor is, is producing products and sells one of them, the market share of the existing company that had 100% now goes down. So I think it's important not to focus on market sh It is an important metric, market share, but it's important to note that the share will go down as competitors come in. But in Tesla's case, I think it's more important to focus on overall unit sales. 
which for Tesla has been increasing 50% year over year, roughly. They, they can keep selling more and more cars and still have their market share go down because it's a percent of the market. Next analyst we have is Colin Rush, very highly ranked um, on tip ranks, number 11 out of 8,328. He had a price target of 436 in October of 2022, but he's is reluctant to have a price target now. He just has a hold rating on Tesla. He's been bullish on Tesla in the past and seems to understand them quite well. So there's an article here from January 17th, 2023, Colin Rush at Oppenheimer highlighted a few potential concerns for Tesla. A recession impacting new car purchases, increased competition and ongoing uncertainty around Twitter's finances. Shares are likely to trade higher into the March 1st investor day, Rush said. For now, however, we continue to expect a choppy start to the year and remain on the sidelines as China demand becomes clearer post-lunar New Year and macroeconomic volatility slows, the analyst said. I think we've already seen that the demand in China after these price cuts, there's no problem there. There's The price cuts spurred huge demand in China in the States and in, or in Europe. I wouldn't be surprised to see an update from Colin reiterating his buy rating on Tesla, but at the moment he just has a hold with no price target. Last analyst I wanted to mention was Pierre Farragou. He has a $526 price target on Tesla. He recently visited the Giga Berlin and he was impressed. So here's some of his comments from an article in August of 2022. He wrote this in an article. Compared to Fremont, Berlin is visibly much more efficient. Logistics inside the factory are much simpler. Ease by docks surrounding the fab from all sides and ensuring parts come in at the right place in the, ma in the manufacturing chain. The single manufacturing line is designed for a cycle time of 45 seconds and will deliver 10,000 cars per week at full capacity. A side note, it takes just above five full days nonstop to do 10,000 cars at 45 seconds per car. So this target accounts for a healthy 25% downtime. Most importantly, cars are manufactured today with a rear casting and will shift to rear and front casting as soon as the 4680 structural battery packs will be available. He seems to be up on what Tesla is up to. I think it's important to listen to bulls and bears on a stock and decide if what they are saying makes sense via your own research. Different motives uh, could be in play that the time they can dedicate to one stock versus a retail investor like myself or Stephen Mark Ryan, Rob Maurer at Tesla Daily. We seem to be fo hyper focused on Tesla, you know, a single stock versus these analysts who cover maybe a couple dozen stocks. So hopefully you learned something there. Please like and subscribe. Uh, you can click on the wheel to subscribe or click on one of the links to watch some more. My name is Evan Bertrand. This is the Evergreen Channel. Thanks for watching.